Greetings, this is Eugene the Philosopher, the greatest living philosopher after the unfortunate passing of Quentin Robert de Nameland, who has been the greatest living philosopher before me. Uh, as it should have been, should be clear from the title of this video, we'll talk about hair. And as it is, is apparent probably from uh, my look, um, at least if you compare it to the previous video, uh, the motivation should be pretty clear, right? So uh, I do this uh, every year. Um, like uh, I only cut my hair once per year, like like that for like I leave only like three millimeters. But this time, as is apparent from my previous videos, like you can just watch the, the timeline. Uh, I did that uh, in two years. So last time I trimmed my hair was two years ago, uh, which was already. I mean, this ch channel was already there, so you can compare it um, easily. So it was a bit of an experiment, all right. So, but otherwise, uh, I would actually recommend for at least men. Uh, I mean, it probably wouldn't work for m women that that well. Although we'll actually talk about this. Uh, I would recommend this technique, so to speak. Like you, you may actually cut your hair once per year, and like. Um, so that saves you a lot of effort, basically, right? It's very practical, uh, in this sense. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank me later. Uh, okay. And plus you have, you know, in this year you have a whole range of, of uh, hairstyles, right? Of hair lengths, so to speak. Uh, plus if you do it at the beginning of summer, as I usually do, like right now, uh, it's very convenient, right? When it's very hot, you have very short hair and like uh, by the time winter comes, you have already a decent amount of hair, which is also very practical. So again, thank me, thank me later. All right. So, uh, the main point uh, I wish to talk about here um, in this video was, uh, like again, motivation is there clearly, but there is one point I was thinking about for many years already, right? So it's not something new, it's not something inspired by anything really. Like I thought about it maybe like 10 years ago, first time, right? And I was just like carrying this thought and I didn't really find any counter evidence to it. So I think it's a valid point. So I want to make it. Uh, and this point is really the, the most of the content of this video, right? The point I, I wish to make. But first I wish to introduce a caveat to this point is that it probably doesn't work like it probably depends on culture right so in some cultures of course uh, some certain hairstyles are required due to either like tradition religious uh, practices or something like that right so uh, in some cultures you would find let's say men with some special hairstyles like warrior type of men right I don't know whatever like all those kinds of things like some religious people would have a different hairstyle or whatever. Uh, but the point works. Oh, there's actually a pretty violent uh, rain right behind me because there's a balcony with an open door. Like, who knows? Maybe we'll actually have a, uh, this time a ball lightning cameo, you know, like it was a fly cameo in the previous video. Okay, whatever. Um, so uh, the point I'm making would be the most valid for western society like modern westernized society where it is roughly speaking acceptable to have any sort of hair you like right for both men and women so this is what i'm talking about in this setup it would be very very uh, like uh, uh, applicable acceptable i guess what i'm gonna talk about and in particular the main point i wish to make in this video this point that i was thinking about is that Roughly speaking, hair length is that a person chooses, again, on, off or on their own volition for themselves, is proportional to the distance that this person wants to keep between them and the other people, right? So the hair length is proportional to the distance to other people that they wish to keep, right? Meaning, roughly speaking, that short hair, hair, type of people this this length of hair sort of or a little bit longer like maybe a few centimeters long uh, they are sort of close up people up up front like um, bold kind of you know being right there straightforward kind of people whereas longer hair people are more distanced right so this is what I'm talking about essentially this is the main the main point so and it's kind of an intuitive point but I think there is a clear, like, again, 
like half emotional evidence to it like you can just try it out try to think through it and you would see oh that actually makes sense right so in this way uh, you can see that people who want to maintain some sort of mystery maybe maintain some sort of i idola I, idolic i don't know iconic status for themselves uh people who pursue admiration of others uh always have long hair or well frequently let's say right uh people who want to so so they want to keep their distance they want people to like uh, for example uh to idolize them so to put them at a pedestal so that that means other people are kind of far away right so they're not among them they're somewhere out there so to speak uh or people who want some sort of shielding so to speak from other people you know you kind of surround yourself in this mist of hair right so you you are something almost uh, unreachable uh and thus safe you know so you may have longer hair for this reason for example um so think about uh, like a any sort of like mystic people like religious figures again that depends on religion a lot like buddhists have no hair basically right like they shave their heads etc uh, but uh, again in if you think about a random religious person that might appear just right now i mean we all, we all have this image of jesus with long hair right so th th that's always which again I i've already discussed this how uh, in my video uh, deception artists impression where I talked about how this imagery of Jesus is actually very new, so we have no idea how he actually looked uh, in 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 reality, whatever you like uh, to to call it that, etc. But if you think about a random religious person, you would probably picture them with the long hair, right? Because they they should have this aura of mysticism around them, which is only uh, uh, achievable through longer hair. Okay. So, and this creates some sort of distance between you and them, right? So, this is basically an illustration of what I'm talking about. And on the other hand, people with shorter hair, they're usually perceived as, as sort of dull, you know, uninteresting in some sense, uh, simple, straightforward, um, taken at face value, sort of, uh, true in some other sense, like they're they not deceptive, right? They're, they are exactly like they look, right? There's nothing hidden behind this uh, aura of, of hair uh, you can clearly see them etc their ears for example uh, which might be more of a you know behaviorist kind of thing so if you see much more of their face due to the lack of hair it's actually more um, you know just on a pure like very fundamental emotional intuitive level feels more safe right because well you can see everything it's kind of like this uh, hands up uh, thing right you don't see any weapons uh, so you, you feel safer so this is the sign of a surrender essentially i have nothing you know behind me i have no hidden agendas etc uh, like I, I am in your power right now i'm delivering myself to your domain so to speak etc etc so people with shorter hair tend to be perceived as kind of like open bald kind of again straightforward up up close type of people uh, risky maybe maybe uh, something like that selfless even because they have nothing to hide they have nothing to lose to some degree right etc etc so for this reason again in our western civilization men are preferably and again i'm talking about like recent couple of centuries because obviously it depends on culture like in i don't know 18th 17th century men tend to wear you know these ridiculous whitewashed wigs etc uh, so i'm talking about the, the modern civilization uh, even like the, the the very modern one where women uh, mostly had longer hair and men had shorter hair, right? Uh, and this is to a large degree still true, but I mean, in feminists, for example, you have shorter hair, again, because they want to copy men, right? Because they want to look uh, like this very straightforward, working proletariat type of person, right? And not this mystical, mysterious, uh, 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 adorable not, not, not adorable like seeking for adoration type of person which is like a, a traditionally perceived woman is right 
Um, so woman needs to be uh, conquered by man, needs to be reached by man to some degree. So a woman is uh, sitting in some faraway castle and a man must strive to acquire her, right? Something like that. So a woman must have long hair for this reason. She must be out there in the distance. And a man must have short hair to kind of pursue this woman, to, to be like to throw himself into the danger, etc., etc., etc. So it all, it's all very well fitting to each other, I would say. Um, but of course, again, in many situations, it may be reversed. Like if a woman wants to be perceived as a more simple, as a, like a, you know, some, this sort of like a hippie, sort of like a, uh, homeless type of person, you know, like, I, I, oh, I'm very open, I'm, I'm very different, I'm very blah, 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 uh, I'm very straightforward, I'm very honest, etc. So she would have a shorter hair uh, to show all of that, right? Clearly. Or she would like, you know, even if she has longer hair, she would kind of try to hide it somehow. Um, like, you know, make this kind of I don't know how you call it in English, like the, the, the sort of like a ponytail, but where essentially you look like a short hair person, right? Uh, like again, a working man type of person, like a proletariat. Okay, so this is this is one point, the key point I wanted to communicate in this video, and hopefully I did. Uh, <clears throat> but there are also a couple of other points which I think would be worth mentioning. I mean. I'm trying to keep this channel like a little bit useful at least. So there is a couple of uh, other things that may be useful for you to even use in your own personal life. Uh, like one of these are, is actually the thing I discovered l literally today when I was like quasi researching. Like th there's one paper I wanted to link to you, which I would mention later with regards to the third point, but during my search, I actually found a second point, this one, uh, which I'm going to tell you. So it's, it's what is called hair part theory, okay? So if you, uh, paste it in DuckDuckGo or any other decent search engine, right? Not Google, which is controlled by American intelligence. We don't want to play their game. So we use DuckDuckGo or something else. Mm, I don't know, Yahoo or Bing or whatever whatever floats your boat. Uh, so if you search for hair part theory, you would find it, basically. And the theory is, basically it speaks about like uh, the preference in parting hair, if that's the proper verb, uh, actually has a large impact on perception of the person. So let's say if a man parts their hair, so it is assumed, like, what I mean by, by, by parting hair is like having hair, like, done like, like that, you know, or like that, for example, right? Or, or neutral, like, having it like that, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, it has, so the idea is that, uh, different hemispheres of our brain are subconsciously activated when we look at such face, you know, with, with hair done like this or like this. So it's either your right or left hemisphere activates. And therefore, your whole perception of this face changes through this preferential activation of one of our, or the other hemisphere. But I think actually the author uh, explains it uh, wrong, completely wrong. Like, what I think they miss is that our hemispheres are reversed in terms of our fields of view, you know, like the left, uh, the right side of your field of view, for you it would be left, but I'm talking about myself from my point of view. So the right side of my field of view is controlled by my left hemisphere, right? And the left side by my right hemisphere. Therefore, um, the part of the face I'm perceiving uh, is would be uh, with the hair, you know, because it's more contrast, etc. So if your hair is done like this, like this part of the face looks more interesting, so you focus more attention on it, and therefore you, the opposite side of your brain would activate because it's reversed in terms of fields of view, right? This is how I think it should work. And therefore, the men with, let's say, hair being parted to the left side, it's from your field of view right now, uh, from your point of view, uh, it would activate your right hemisphere, right? And what is right hemisphere? Wait. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, I knew I knew it's gonna happen. So even with my decent understanding of geometry, I'll probably screw it up somehow. Um, so this is left for you, right? Yeah, it should be left for you. Then, yeah, indeed, your right hemisphere activates, and right hemisphere is uh, like um, like this artistic, holistic sort of uh, vague pattern recognition, right? So not analyzing, not thinking critically, but more of a like a admiring, emotional, like creative type of thing, right? Would activate if you if you see this, uh, or if you see this, then your rational, your scrutinizing, your uh, analyzing type of brain would activate, right? Your left hemisphere, um, dominating kind of, right? So here you perceive from the bottom up, you you want to uh, like submit to this person, and here you want to oppress this person. You want to kind of be dominant over them because your left hemisphere activates and here's your right hemisphere. So I, this is how I think it should work. But uh, the author describes it like backwards. He thinks that uh, if if you see this, then your left hemisphere activates, which I think is not the case. So he, his explanation is reversed. But nevertheless, I think that the point he makes is that that it matters and it matters probably a lot is actually a valid point. So I would recommend you to look into it, like in your own life, uh, like how you, you know, make your hair, etc. Uh, because it it actually looks important, in my opinion. And if you if you need some simple advice on how to change your life, then changing your haircut is actually probably the most like uh, harmless and at the same time very a very impactful advice that you can give to some uh, someone. I mean, women do it all the time, so maybe men should try it as well. Uh, it might it might work, uh, especially looking at. I mean, most men have the same hairstyle like throughout all of their life, right? So if if they try to change something in their life, maybe hair is not the worst place to start. And I, I mean that seriously. I mean, it sounds ridiculous because you would think you would think, well, how would it impact anything? But it actually would because people would react to you differently and. I mean, this is the the thing that a lot of men have problems with, right? Like assessing how society actually views them, right? A lot of men has poor style. They dress like, I don't know, like shit. So these things are certainly worth looking at, right? And I don't exclude myself from this, by the way. I'm, I'm including myself into the lot of men that I'm talking about. All right. Uh, yeah. This is more or less what I wanted to say about hair part theory. Look, look it up. It's really, it really looks like it works. But again, keep in mind my objections to it. I think the explanation should be reversed. Uh, like again, there's a brilliant example that the author gives with Bruce Willis's smirk. You know, kind of like, um, like huh, this one. Um, so if you do it like that, like huh, uh, again, it's your uh, dominating hemisphere perceived. Way. Uh, no, your right hemisphere, which is the creative one, the emotional one, perceives this, right? Because it's on the left side of, of the screen, so to speak, right? Uh, um, but if it's on the right side of the screen, if you just mirror image it, uh, it would look very, very, very sarcastic, you know, very evil almost. Uh, because you're scrutinizing, you're dominating, left side hemisphere uh, would perceive it. And it would try to an analyze it, it would say, what the hell? Like, is this guy laughing at us? Like, what? Is that an evil, like, gesture? Evil piece of mimicry? I don't know, whatever. So, yeah. All right, let's talk about uh, the third point I wanted to make. And this is about the, this paper that I was searching for while I found the, the second thing. Uh, and it's about the hair whorl. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a correct pronunciation. It's W-H-O-R-L, right? Whorl. I guess it's kind of like whirl, but whirl for some reason. Uh, it's basically like the spiral pattern that you have on your crown, uh, you know, your hair have on, on your crown. Uh, so, interestingly, like for some reason I was interested in this question like a few years back, like maybe six years, something like that. 
And what I found was one interesting paper, the one that I would link in the description, that says that indeed the spiral character of this whorl on your crown actually is connected to your handedness. So whether you are right handed or left handed, okay? So people with uh, clockwise uh, whorl, if looked at from above, uh, and I, I would actually show the picture what I mean by clockwise or counterclockwise because it's not really clear from like the wording itself like uh, clockwise um, uh, handedness so to speak of whorl uh, is the same as uh, the wind picture in, in an uh, in a cyclone in northern hemisphere so it's actually sort of like reversed in terms of wind flow I mean if you well okay forget about it just look at the picture okay that would be clockwise and, and counterclockwise so people who have clockwise pattern uh, of hair and keep in mind that's only when you have a single whorl like some people have double whorl like two centers of rotation so to speak some people even have three whorls and some people have like some very unclear pattern so it cannot even be determined whether there is a whorl or, or not but most people uh, have clockwise whorl, okay? But out of the counterclockwise uh, people, so to speak, one half, almost exactly one half are left-handed, right? Whereas in clockwise whorl, only about 5%, like less than 10% at the very least, are uh, left-handed. So there is a clear connection of, of this... Um, sidedness so to speak of of hair growth on your head and uh, the hand that you prefer to use right so it indicates that there is some very basic genetic factor connecting these two things uh like maybe again maybe a single gene or maybe some make uh, because it actually depends on your parents it seems i mean it's connected to to which handedness and, and world type your parents had, right? So see, see the paper for more details. But anyway, it may be some like gene or it may be a like a random pattern that appears for some reason again, or maybe not so random actually, uh, at, at like the, at maybe even at conception, right? So it may be epigenetic, like, or it may not even be genetic, but it may be like, uh, anatomical in terms of the very first cell of the body you know the fertilized egg so maybe some sort of like chirality or some sort of uh, distribution of uh, organelles like uh, or whatever else like the, the internal tissue of the cell uh, interstitium or whatever how it's configured de determines like w what kind of you know like the spiral patterns would emerge as the organism grows up so yeah uh, it may be something like that, I would assume. Okay, this is pretty much it. Um, just just an interesting point to uh, study. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely uh, curious how the this mirror type of thing uh, is matters, you know, in humans. And one connected thing which you might be interested in again in a practical sense is there there was another paper that i found um i i remember the point somebody made like um uh, i don't know some decades ago actually like maybe 15 years ago i've read something like that that if you like you should whisper uh like if you whisper to your lover you should do it in the right ear for example the right meaning right side not, not the right you know <laughs> whichever it is uh, i mean the right side right hand side ear uh right uh, and uh, right now I was researching it because, well, I wanted to know which, which it is, like whether I even remembered this correctly. And what I found was that actually, yes, right ear is the best one in or in terms of like perceiving information in general. But again, the um, sort of uh, justification that I remembered was wrong, I think, because again, the right ear is connected to the left hemisphere. 
Whereas what I've read was that the right ear is connected to the right hemisphere, which is the emotional one, and therefore you should, you know, whisper emotional stuff to the right ear because it would get into the right hemisphere. Whereas in reality it's the reversed, right? You need to whisper things, any things actually, into the right ear of a person because it's connected to the left hemisphere, which is the best at analyzing information, right? Because uh, as the study shows, or at least the, it's the conclusion that the author makes, is that if you whisper things in the left ear, like some information is being lost or it's not processed as quickly, etc., etc., therefore the response is not achieved in some, in, in a larger amount of cases, right? So you need to use the right ear, which is, you know, a faster route to the left hemisphere where the sound is actually processed, at least the, the most, right? The best. So you have to use right ear, uh, long story short. Okay, yeah. Well, I guess that would be all. So what we talked about in this video was that, uh, firstly, I made my point, right, that the length of hair depends on what signal you want to send to other people in terms of how they should approach you, like which distance they should keep to you. So shorter hair means short distance, like come closer, I'm okay with that. Longer hair means keep your distance, uh, I wish to, you know, not not be touched by you, etc. So therefore, again, traditionally men have shorter hair because they are like expendable, again, as I say in my uh, understanding gender video. Whereas women have longer hair because they need to be achieved by men, right? Pursued by men. So they need to keep their distance in order to keep the, 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 the charm, the, the mystery of them, etc., etc. Uh, and it works in many other occasions as well. But I make a caveat that for some traditional religious or other reasons, it may not be the case for any specific culture. All right. Then we've dis discussed hair part theory where basically how you uh, like part your hair on the left or the right side may actually seriously impact your life uh, like again long story short uh, if you want to look more masculine you need to do it on the left side like that um, if you want to look more feminine uh, you want to do it on the right side like that uh, but i think again the explanation that the author gives is wrong uh, and I propose my own explanation where, uh, again, it's the reverse hemisphere that perceives this. So if you do look at per a person with hair done like that, uh, your right hemisphere activates, which perceives them from the bottom up, from a sort of an em emotional, holistic standpoint. Whereas if you perceive a person with hair done like that, your uh, logical, sort of cold, uh, analytical hemisphere activates, right, the left one. So, yeah, etc., etc. Then we talked about the hair whirl uh, and how it's connected to handedness, where, again, clockwise uh, has, like, counterclockwise whirl has uh, almost half of the people left-handed, right? Uh, I mean, half of the people who have counterclockwise whirl are left-handed, whereas in clockwise worlds, only f about 5% of the people are uh, left-handed. And again, most of the people on Earth have clockwise worlds. So only about 10% of the po world's population are left-handed, right? And therefore, again, from out of... Uh, I mean, there, there aren't many counterclockwise world people on this planet, that's what I'm saying. Which may be, as I hypothesized, and probably the author of this paper as well, may be caused by some very ba basic genetic factor, maybe epigenetic factor, or maybe some like very initial organic anatomy. I mean, the, the, the very first cell of the body might have some twist to it for some reason, etc. Um, so they may, there may be some curality of that sort. And then, finally, we talked about the ears, that uh, it's uh, the right ear is much better at, at receiving any sort of verbal information. So if you wish to, uh, I mean, I don't know, establish some ASMR sex studio or whatever, uh, use the, the right ear for any sort of verbal signals, right? Uh, left ear kind of sucks, really. I mean, I, I'm trying to kind of model 
how would people say something to my right ear and I can easily imagine it but left ear I, I would probably not even understand what they're saying I mean of course I'm exaggerating but it, it kind of makes sense or maybe I'm just delusional who knows all right thank you for watching the eons are closing